As for YFM, well, right now there's a 0% chance that we will ever see a new song coming in the future. I mean, Ray has moved on to a new band, so seeing a new song, hell, even new content regarding YFM, is very unlikely. Alright, before I left, I told you I have a big announcement for you. Are you having a baby? No, I'm not having a kid, come on. Imagine how messed up that kid would be. Here's the big announcement I got for you. Y you know what, I'll just show you. Right now, there's a 0% chance that we will ever see a new song coming in the future. Meanwhile... Hey, hey dude, dude, that's your favorite Marshall. 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 I sure do hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Your favorite Martian is an animated web band created by YouTuber Ray William Johnson associated with the musician Jesse Kale. Jenna was created in 2006, but nothing was uploaded until five years later in 2011 after Ray William Johnson signed a deal with Maker Studios. This not only helped kickstart the YFM project, but any other projects like expansion version of his other series, Equals 3. For the first years of being active, they achieved a lot of popularity, getting over 2 million subscribers and almost half a billion views. But around November 2012, they shut down the project because of the dispute that Maker Studios and Ray William Johnson had, so they presumably pressured him to sign a new contract which limited Ray's access to his AdSense revenue, which will lead to them taking 40% of his profit, thus breaking their existing deal, and leading to Maker pretty much taking the rights to YFM, which didn't make things better since that a couple years later, Disney bought the rights to Maker Studios. So for the time Disney owned YFM, which I guess canonically means that the unofficial Smithers love song was canon at the time, but hey, that's besides the point. This news pretty much made a lot of their fans confused and pretty bummed out, especially since in their last official song at the time, Boom Headshot, they announced that they were making an album. Though not too long ago, they did make a community post saying that, although they did throw some ideas here and there, the album was actually not that deep into development and was cancelled long ago. Now, around late 2020, I got the idea to look back at YFM since I didn't remember watching their songs back at their prime and I did really enjoy listening to the songs, so I decided to make a video about it and upload it on January 4th, 2021. Not really expecting much of it, but little did I know that a specific YFM song would blow up in meme culture around this time. Mr. Douchebag's song blew up and became a meme for some reason, and then it led to many others feeling nostalgic about the band, which led to my video getting noticed by the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, I know it sounds shocking nowadays, but <laughs> I can't believe it either. And it blew up, which for my first video actually using a computer to edit instead of an iPad, I'm still somewhat happy with the ending product. Like, in terms of the script, like, the editing was fucking rough and the audio sounded like ass for the majority of the time. But, you know, it's not my worst video that I made that year. I played it, I can officially confirm that this sure was a meh experience. Let's talk about the amount of content the game has. Shut your stupid- My thoughts on your favorite margin have changed a bit since the last time I fully listened to their music, and overall, Gen 1 of YFM is kind of a mixed bag. On one hand, you have a plethora of hilarious and catchy songs like Club Villain, Jupiter, Friendzone, and Orphan Tears, and on the other hand, we definitely have some songs that demonstrate how badly aged some lines and songs are, like the stereotype song and transphobic techno- Even then, I argue that originally their careers ended in the worst way. Instead of being hilariously dumb like before, or being hilariously bad like with some of their recent songs like Dookie Fresh and Booty Store- God, I hate saying that. Instead, they just became boring to listen to, and writing this after doing a two and a half hour live stream, listening to all their songs in one go, definitely went from being dumb to just becoming a chore to listen to more than anything. But you could imagine my surprise to hear that a lot of the older slash leader music videos that were being made were re-uploaded to their channel, and even episodes of the Y Fam animated series were also being re-uploaded there, which is something that I really never expected to see. But something that I was really surprised by was the fact that Ray William Johnson would announce on his TikTok that not only did he have 100 percent of the rights to your favorite Martian back, but they were returned with YFM Gen 2 coming back in June 1st of 2022 with new songs, including the return of people like Jesse Kale voicing Venator, Wax becoming a returning guest singer and songwriter, and even having redesigns of the characters, which... Yeah, I definitely wasn't the biggest fan of when I first saw them, but I am getting used to them. Except of Axel's redesign, that shit just looks ass. On May 26, they officially announced that their first song coming back would be a sequel to their song, Orphan Tears, which I've said in the past is my favorite YFM song. It's the perfect combination of absurdity, fun, and catchiness. So I hope that this sequel will not only be a fun return to YFM, but also be a nice sequel song. And in a cool turn of events, they released it a day earlier on May 31st. So what did I think of it? Well... <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Alright, so let's get this first thing out of the way. Animation-wise, it definitely still isn't the best, but surprisingly enough, these new redesigns look pretty alright animated. The character animation still does have a lot of the jankness that their older songs had, but it might be nostalgia speaking here, but I kinda like how it works for YFM since it adds to its charm. I mentioned before that coming into this music video, I was pretty worried how the characters would look, but I think that these new redesigns work pretty well with the new style that YFM is going for, though some of the background characters look pretty inconsistent. Something that I never really noticed in my first view, but noticed a lot more you looking at it more is how expressive and exaggerated the character's animation is when it comes to their movement, although I really can't say that when it comes to their facial expressions, which was something that Ray mentioned was a pretty big factor when it came to their redesigns, so hopefully they do make it a little bit more unique in future songs. The back room remains pretty simplistic for most of the song, which... I guess works, but I hope they don't remain this simplistic for their later songs considering how at the time some of the older Gen 1 music videos had some pretty backgrounds. And fun fact, the original animation studio that animated the earlier YFM song, Studio Ladybug, animated Orphan Tears 2, which I guess sort of confirms that they're going to be the people that will be animating the songs from now on, which honestly I'm fine with. Definitely better than having Ray animated himself, since if you have seen some of his music videos for his other band, The Upside Downs, you know that his animation doesn't really look good. The overall music quality of Worf and Tears 2 is actually pretty good. Ray's rapping in Gen 1 of YFM felt a lot more energetic, but also quite sloppy. But in here, he sounds more laid back, which I can definitely get behind since it makes his voice sound more clear. The lyrics in his segment felt like YFM never left, which on one hand is good since it still has a lot of the absurd charm to it, but on the other hand, it definitely has a lot of lines sounding cheesy as hell. For example, a gang of tiny he-men, I pray to Morgan Freeman, my brother in Christ, what the fuck does that mean? One thing I'm surprised by is that DJ didn't get his own verse in the song, and it's weird since he not only did get a verse in Orphan Tears Part 1, but he also made an appearance here, but he legit just jack shit that you basically take him out of the music video and nothing would change. Speaking of, the instrumental for this song is basically the same as the original Orphan Tears, except in two aspects, those being the chorus and in the end part. I like to divide the chorus into two parts, the one sang by Stevie the Demon and the one sang by Ray. Stevie is a character from Ray's other brand project, The Upside Downs, a band with only 16 songs. And in the past, I said, and I quote, And all I'm gonna say about it is that The Upside Downs are literally everything that made YFM so charming. Except the complete opposite, as in, it's, it's just okay. And after listening to their songs, I think I was being a little bit too nice with that statement. At best, I would say that they make decent songs sometimes, but the majority of them are just really bad. So I guess you can kind of call Orphan Tears 2 a crossover between the Upside Downs and YFM. I don't really know. And many people aren't really the biggest fan of her. In fact, out of every single critique I've seen of Orphan Tears Part 2, I'd say that she's probably the biggest problem that I've seen rise from the community. And Honestly, I feel like that's just kind of a big over exaggeration because I don't really have a problem with Stevie singing. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that Kelly Farrell, Ray's wife, is the one who voiced her here. And overall, I think she did a pretty good job when it came to the small segment she sang for. However, my problem doesn't really arise that Stevie singing is bad. No, my problem comes in with the fact that the crossover feels forced. It's less of an actual crossover, more like a promotional thing, where it's like, hey, you like this demon character in her newest song after like a decade? Then go check out my other anime animated band. I'm not opposed to a crossover between YFM and the Upside Downs at all. In fact, I would think it would really be a really rad idea. I just hope that it's an actual crossover instead of what they did here. Anyway, I really don't really got much to say about the other part of the chorus. It's only kind of a trap remix of the OG chorus. Although I do have to admit that these parts of the chorus show off some of the best aspect of the animation. Oh yeah, Wax is in this song too. And just like last time, Bro absolutely kills it. His lyrics aren't exactly as chaotic or as over the top as the original, but I swear, you can literally give him the lyrics to fucking lift yourself by Kanye and he would still make it an absolute banger. This man's flow just goes way too hard. This is also where the storyline of Orphan Tears starts. Yup, you heard me correctly. Orphan Tears now has a storyline. So basically, they all get wasted in the bar and then a cocktail waitress takes them out to the back where they find little cartoon pigs. But when they snap out of the Orphan Tears, they find out that the pigs aren't actually children, which leads to, unironically, the best line of the entire song. Not an engineer, but I think these Orphan Tears are made from actual Orphan's Tears. Man, I fucking know that whoever wrote that line felt like an absolute genius. Was it you, Mr. Johnson? Yeah, I bet it was you. But if you think that shit can get any funnier, Bill Cosby shows up out of whoever knows where and owns the bar. Then he tells the others that they aren't going anywhere and that the children are staying. Like, who fucking comes up with this shit? <laughs> And yeah, after that, the song ends with a promise of an Orphan Tears 3, which... 
uh, okay, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't really think that the concept of Ray William Johnson featuring Cartoon Wax getting drunk on orphan tears while fighting a giant Bill Cosby in his underwear to serve the trilogy. But you know what? Pop off, I guess. I, I don't fucking know. That was Orphan Tears 2. And you know what? As a return to YFM after a decade, honestly, I think that this is definitely a good sign to what's to come in the future. Will this message be as poorly as my final message on this topic? Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Either way, this is going to be my final video on the topic of your favorite Martian, so I really could care less. But yeah, best of luck to Ray, Jesse Kale, Wax, and the rest of the people working in future YFM content. And while for the majority of the time I did sound pessimistic in this video, I honestly really do hope that this is a promising start to a new era of the band. Before I end this video, by the time I upload this, I have reached 1,000 subscribers, which is a milestone I never expected to reach on YouTube, and seeing that number on my account is absolutely insane. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the content I make, since I absolutely love making it for you guys. Of course, I want to thank my amazing friends and mutuals I've met along my journey as a content creator so far, but honestly, I really want to thank all of you for subscribing, liking, commenting, or even taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. I'll continue to make the best content I can, and I hope that you guys will enjoy Enjoy what's to come. So yeah, that's really all I have to say. This has been Manuel D, and from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. Hey. Hey.